Welcome back to the Sports Max Zone. We are continuing now to talk football and uh, European domestic football. In fact, the opening round of the new season of English Premier League ended a short while ago with Tottenham Hotspur and promoted Leicester City playing to a one-all draw at the King Power Stadium. The remaining nine matches of the opening round saw these results. Chelsea losing 2-0 to Manchester City. Brentford 2-1 over Crystal Palace. Same score for Aston Villa over West Ham. Arsenal winning 2-0 over Wolves. Brighton were 3-0 better than Everton. Newcastle 1-0 over Southampton with an S. <laughs> Nottingham 1-1 with Bournemouth. Liverpool won 2-0 at Ipswich. And Manchester United won by one goal to nil over Fulham. Simon Evans has been following action and he joins us now to uh, recap the opening round of the EPL. Simon, a colleague of mine told me on Saturday that uh, um, the powers that be, or let me just say um, the the the... The, the world, the football world, should not allow Manchester City to win five Premier League titles in a row. And something will have to happen and they won't win again this year. <laughs> Having seen the opening round, any thoughts on that? Yeah, on the basis of what we saw them uh, produce against, uh, against Chelsea, who are you know, a top six team you would expect, uh, certainly uh, a top half team, uh, we should expect Manchester City to be competing for the title again. Um, the only the only thing that might stop them is is the legal issue that's still going on the 115 charges against them for financial fair play, which um, that process sort of moves to the next phase in September, and after that we don't know how long that will take. But um, that's hanging over over this season the way it hung over last season as well. It's taking a long, long time. But in terms of the on the field stuff. City are going to take some catching again, yeah. <laughs> All right, let's retrace our steps um, and go to the very beginning because it started on Friday and some Man United fans were very encouraged by what they saw on, on Friday, suggesting that uh, their, their hopes are now up for a, a big season. Uh, did you see anything from Man United on Friday that, um, that should give Man United fans hope? Well, hope, yes. I mean, you know, was it a performance that suggested they're going to be challenging with City and Arsenal at the very, very top? No, it wasn't. But um, there's certainly some signs that uh, Ten Hag is, is putting something uh, together that might be a little bit better than what we've seen over the last couple of years from United. Um, and, and that guy we're looking at there, Xerxes coming off the bench and scoring. A centre forward who's a goal threat coming from Bologna over the over the summer, Dutch striker who's been played in Italy, he he, he gives them some hope. So there's, there's always hope, but have they got the overall quality? I don't think they have yet. No, and I don't see in the players that they brought in a massive leap in quality that's going to put them in the in the title chase. But could they finish in the top four? Could they have a, a decent season and, and finish in the top four and get back into the Champions League? Yeah, that's possible, I think. Yeah, interesting comments there, Simon. And just to follow up on that, I want your opinion on, you know, which pedigree team you think, based on what you saw in preseason and what you saw in the opening round, um, fans should be more or most concerned about this season in terms of what they'll be able to deliver. Most concerned about in a, in a positive way or a, <laughs> or a negative way? In a negative way. <laughs> in a negative way? Yes. Wow. Um, that, that, this sounds Chelsea related, but continue, Simon. <laughs> yeah, I was just going to say, I mean, Chelsea is, is a basket case of a club. You know, we, we don't know what goes on there. Their transfer policy, I mean, just before coming on air, it's like uh, coming out that they're about to... Uh, Sign Joao Felix, um, who they had on loan at the start of last year, and then he went to Barcelona, and now they're bringing him back from Atletico Madrid for a fee of around 40 something million. But at the same time, Conor Gallagher is going to Atletico Madrid also for 40 million. Um, these long deals are happening, six year deals. Raheem Sterling puts out a press release uh, an hour before the game because he's not happy about not being in the squad and, and he's looking for looking for a move if he's not going to be featuring. So there's all this going on around Chelsea. A new manager comes in. They, they're moving through managers still very quickly there. But the difference when they moved through all the managers under Abramovich was that the team was relatively stable. 
um, and you had all these different people in charge of them who were able to to get results. Um, but at the moment, uh, Chelsea looks like you know. I, I said I was hesitating when I called them a top six club at the start because they could easily be a club that that ends up finishing uh, in mid table, which, given the the talent that they have, um, would be a massive underachievement. But it it does feel like there's just no stability at Chelsea. Yeah, and. I guess at the other end, in terms of stability, Manchester City, you spoke about, they have been just brilliant. Can't say enough about them. But Arsenal have been very good over the last two seasons, especially. Um, based on what, again, you saw in pre-season, um, based on what you saw in the opening game against Wolves, um, does this Arsenal team have what it takes to push City again to be as good, if not better, than they were over the last two campaigns? Yeah, I think they could be as good as that, and I think they could, they could, you know, they could have easily won it last year. You know, a few games here and there, and they could have done it. And uh, you look at that team; and it was a comfortable win against Wolves. You know, a two-nil victory. Saka seems to get better and better. He, he's 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 an exciting player who who delivered for them last year, and I'm sure he'll have another great season. The interesting player there, the the first goal scorer was uh, Kai Havertz, who ended the season very well for Arsenal. And, uh, and has started where he left off. And, you know, you think if, if Havertz can turn into a top Premier League striker um, and deliver for them, they've got other players as well, of course, uh, they hope to have coming back, Gabriel Jesus and so on, then, you know, Arsenal, Arsenal should be a contender. I think it would be a real disappointment this season if they didn't push City all the way. Yeah, and Liverpool, Simon, um, post-Jurgen Klopp, um, what are the expectations for them this season? Uh, we don't want to read too much into what we saw over the weekend because this is just the start of the season of, of 38 matches. So, you know, whatever we saw on the weekend might just be the tip of the iceberg. But was there anything about the Liverpool effort under Arnie that would give Liverpool fans some encouragement? Yeah, I think so. I mean, that front line, um, he went with pace, didn't he? He went with uh, Diaz, Jota and Salah as his front three with Sobos like uh, operating behind them and operating behind them very well uh, when they were going forward. Um, and I think that front line will terrify a lot of defences. Um, there's no doubt at all that Darwin Nunes is, is a player who can score a lot of goals and who is a threat. But by going with three fast players like that who can interact and move and swap positions, I mean, Diaz is a fantastic player. You know, we saw him in the summer for Colombia as well in Copa America. He's an absolute live wire. Jota just gets goals all the time. And, and Salah's the same. So if you have a front three as good as that, you are going to be a threat. Now, the big question mark over Liverpool, really, is, is their midfield. And that's where their fans have been saying, you know, they were hoping that they'd bring in a big name into the midfield. But, you know, you look again, a, a player of the quality of, of, of McAllister, Soboslai, I think, could emerge this year as one of the top midfielders in the Premier League. I really rate him, and I think he's had that first season under his belt. So, I, I think Liverpool, actually, this year, could be in the race. I, I, I think, you know, last year they weren't really. I think this year it could click for them, and they will, they will win enough games to be in the conversation, I think, going into March. Whether they've got enough quality to go all the way in that relentless battle that you have to be ready for when you're taking on Manchester City, who amass so many points, that remains to be seen. But I think I think the quality is there, and I think the talk about this sort of end of an era at Liverpool has been a little bit overblown. Mm. You know, Simon, you can't come on the Sports Mag Zone and not give us some sort of a prediction. So I don't know if you've you know, predicted a top three or a top four for this season quite yet. But if you haven't, you have about six seconds to come up with one. Well, I think I just have said my top three, haven't I, really? You know, it's going to be uh, City, Arsenal and Liverpool, I think. Um, the order of it, ooh, you know, I think City will do it again. I do. I, I, I know, you know, I'm from the north of England. I generally support northern teams. But I would also like to see, you know, somebody else win it this year. But, um, you know, City... They, they, they just got, they've just got so much quality. They, they can allow a player of the quality of Julian Alvarez to leave um, and still feel comfortable about what they've got, says everything. So I, I think City will do it. I think Arsenal will push them very, very close. And I think Liverpool will too. Who will be fourth? 
I think he will be United. I think he will be United. <laughs> That's my guy. <laughs> Lance? I'm being brave there, but I think he could be. Yeah, yeah you are right. being brave. Right. I don't see it, but I hope you're right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Simon, great talking to you at the start of the EPL season, and I'm sure we'll have a lot more conversations in the coming months. Thanks, man. Cheers. All the best. Yeah, so Manchester City, Manchester City already unprecedented four EPL titles in a row. And uh, Simon tips them to make it five. Can you believe that? We'll have more football coming up after the break.